Welcome back to Inspire DIYer, and if you're here for the first time, my name is Max, and today we're making tonkotsu ramen. So this version utilizes instant pot, but you don't obviously need to. Uh, it would just take you longer to do it without the instant pot. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So starting off with Memma bamboo shoot, I added some sesame oil, then I saute it for about 2-3 to three minutes or so, before adding the soy sauce, mirin, sake, and some vegetable broth, or in this case I use better than bouillon. I then set that aside to let it cool down and work on the shashu itself. So unfortunately this piece of the pork belly that I purchased was not the original piece that I wanted to do the shashu for, because uh, the other piece that I bought, it has way too much fat than what I wanted for this recipe, so I decided to use this particular piece that I bought it for like kimbap or something instead. For the shashu sauce itself, I'm simply using some soy sauce, mirin and sake again, and then I'm simply just searing the, the shashu a little bit before adding the sauce in. Once it's starting to sear up on all sides, I simply add the sauce in and then I went in with the ginger, green onion and some garlic. I then let this simmer on a low heat for about like 2-3 to three hours or so before letting it cool completely. In the meantime, I was starting to work on the tonkotsu broth itself. So I simply put in a whole bunch of pork bones, that's including some back bones, and some pork feet which adds a lot of collagen to this tonkotsu broth as well as some chicken bones and some pork chicken feet as well. So I did the pre-boil method for this and I let the bones boil in the instant pot for around 20 to 30 minutes or so before dumping all the waters out and starting to clean all the bones. I'm really not super particular about this but I simply just try to get as much meat out as I can and then try to get clean all the dirty bits off the bones and simply put them back to, into the instant pot. And once that's done, I put into uh, the high pressure mode for about 2 hours or so and just let it go. I forgot to mention that you do want to keep a lookout for your shashu and sort of flip it over about you know half an hour or so, like every, every so often whenever you remember. <laughs> I was just test checking in the video just to see what it tastes like and I was pretty happy with the result so I just refrigerated and let it uh, rest until tomorrow. For this next part here, it's actually the day after. Um, I simply left it overnight for it to pressure cook and then once it finishes and when I woke up in the morning, I simply just open the lid up and then try to remove as much all those dirty bits, so scum, as much as I can and then I simply added all the aromas in. Here I simply added some green onions, some ginger and some onions and as well as the some garlic. I then let it boil down uh, to reduce the amount of liquid for another like a good two hours or so. The next key component to make a really good tonkotsu ramen is the aroma oil itself. So here I'm using a bit of oil that I rendered out from the pork belly yesterday as well as some uh, avocado oil and I'm basically frying some of the garlic that I slice up and I'm going to be using the garlic to garnish uh, for the topping as well. I also added in some green onions to enhance the, this uh, aroma oil. So once that's done, I simply separate the fried garlic and the aroma oil itself and let it cool completely. The next key component of this tonkotsu ramen is to make tare. So for this tare, I'm using some dry sardines and I'm gonna be adding in some green onions, ginger, and garlic. You know the kitchen smells good when there's an uninvited guest here. For the seasoning of this tare, I'm using some soy sauce, some mirin, some sake, as well as some rice vinegar and some sugar. Then I bring it to a boil, then add in some bonito flakes and let it cool completely off the stove. Going back to the tonkotsu broth, this is what it looks like now. So it's fairly creamy and um, getting pretty thick. 
And then the next part here, I'm using the stick blender and this I got this idea from Way of Ramen when he uses the, the stick blender and I found out that it actually works really well. So this is basically what I'm doing to add the extra creaminess to the, the broth and thicken it up. And then I basically strain this out. And make sure you do double strain this because it's the bones are really broken down quite finely so you want to make sure that it doesn't go into the, the broth or the soup itself. Then I basically put it back into the pot and it's ready for serving. In the meantime I also took the shashu out of the fridge and then I basically cut up the rope to slice the shashu as well. And the shashu is where I didn't really I, I think it wasn't too successful in my opinion because like I didn't use that thick of a piece so that it kind of just uh, slid off a little bit here and there but overall it still tastes really good and I really enjoyed it. To heat the shashu up, I simply put it on the frying pan. So to serve this tonkotsu ramen, I simply put in some tare first and then I added some aroma oil into it. After that, I pour in some hot tonkotsu broth into the bowl. Then put in some noodles that we boiled. I don't know if you guys can tell the difference on the video, but this is actually not a real like gluten ramen noodle. It's actually the rice and millet ramen alternative noodle that I purchased from the Costco. Don't hate me for this, but I found out that I have some food sensitivity to gluten as well as all the dailies basically, which is why you also don't see achisuke tamago in here as well. But I'll have a uh, link in the description of when I used to make the, the ramen egg in the past. At this point, I'm pretty much just trying to decorate my artwork to make it look as nice as possible because uh, why not? Like it took a while to make this so you might as well just make it look as nice as you can. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.